Hi guys, it's Rachel here and I'm going to do my tag for the week. I think it's number 16 we're up to. Um, you can see I've got this felt mat. I've been enabled by Pam from Pandora's Junk Journal. She has this felt mat, which is really fantastic. It's very thick. I bought it on um, Amazon and I also bought the little iron. I don't know where I've put it. I'll put it over there. Um, you know, the little sewer's iron. It's small. And, and you can iron on here and then work on here when you're stitching. You can stab it. You can do all kinds of things. So I felt like it was a good investment. One piece of advice Pam said is not to get it wet because it gets a bit smelly. Um, but I felt like it'd be good for this video too. I'm not going to be ironing anything in that. But I, I know that I have to work in this area here. And I've zoomed in quite a bit. So that way you can see what I'm up to. Now this week, so I'm just going to have a sip of my macchiato. Um, this week, um, it's, uh, seed stitch. So seed stitch is generally like a filler sort of stitch. So I was a little bit, um, thinking, oh goodness, what am I going to do? I think quite a few of us were like that. And, um, just a minute, I'm just bringing my basket over here. I've got my painted fabrics in here. Uh, quite a few of us were thinking that. So, um, again, I'm going to do, use a piece of this fabric that I painted. I think I'll use that one. Uh, yeah, quite a few of us were thinking, oh gosh, what are we going to do with that? Because um, I was asked by a few people, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. Because, yeah, it is a, it is a filler stitch. So um, it is a bit daunting, really, to think of something creative with it. So I'm just going to fold that for a minute. Let me just see if that's going to be. Yes, that is. And then I just like to maybe put a crease there. So that way I know where to cut it. I don't think I can tear this one. It's a bit um, tough. It's an antique. I don't know if it's a linen or a hemp. It's okay to stitch in because it's not too heavy, but it's hard to rip. Okay, so that's that. So that's my base. And I was debating whether or not I was thinking, oh, I might trim a little bit. No. I won't trim any more off. I'll put it up there. I just won't glue it there so it can fit through the hole. Um, I was debating whether or not to do maybe a bird. But um, then I, I, um, I get, told my mum a few ideas and she liked the flower idea. So I think I'm going to do flowers. I've got this little bit here. I thought I might put that there. It's going to be a flower garden again. You know, we like flowers. So I think I'm going to stitch this bit down here. I've just found that flo um, floating around in one of my mini baskets. And so we'll just get cracking, get stitching. And it probably have to stop and start the video because, as you know, these things take time. So how is everybody today? I always look forward to doing the tag even though I feel like it's a challenge. I do feel like it's a challenge. Quite often it's quite the challenge. So just going to whip stitch around here very quickly and catch. I think I've got a bit of pen on my finger I can see there. And just catch around here. Okay. So what is everyone up to? It's very warm, or well, very warm, 20 degrees here, which is just like ideal, ideal temperature. I just love, love that sunny and, but you know, cool at night and 20 in the day is perfect. Now I was going to tell you something and I can't remember what I was going to tell you. What was oh I tell you a funny story. So my dad loves drinking cafe macchiato, um, which is you know the little espresso and then usually just um, froth on the top. And so the and it wasn't the first time he came here, but he did come here. I think it was around my when we got married, and he went to the to the <laughs> to the bar and ordered a because in Australia um, you just say. Macchiato. If you go to a cafe to get a coffee, you just say, can I have a macchiato? And everybody knows what that is. And they give you a cafe macchiato, um, a coffee with a bit of froth. And so um, anyway, he goes into the bar here and he says, can I have a macchiato? <laughs> 
and he got a big glass of milk that had just the tiniest mark of coffee on it. So it was pretty much just a, you wouldn't have even been able to taste the coffee. But that is what a macchiato is here. It's a, it's a, it's a latte macchiato. So it's a piece of milk marked or dirtied with a, with a touch of coffee. So I said to dad, he, he told me, and I, because I wasn't with him, I said, Dad, you have to order. If you want a cafe macchiato, you have to say the word cafe macchiato. Otherwise, you'll get the big glass of warm milk <laughs> with the little um, dirtied <laughs> bit of coffee on it. Oh, he couldn't believe it. Anyway, there you go. So there you've learned. To, uh, that, that's a, a story for you. I've got my little buttons in there. Okay. So I have my um, pin here this is my friction pen so I can just iron it and I'm going to just draw randomly a few sprigs of grass that's going to have little they're going to have little French knots and you've seen me do that many times and lots of people have done that and now my pen is not working just a minute yes it is okay now here my my main element here was going to be a flower so I'm just going to draw a circle there. That's going to be the center. And I'm going to have five petals. So it's a very simple flower. Like so. Don't worry, I will get my seed stitch in there. There we go. And it's going to have a stem coming down. And I'll decide about the leaves, whether I'm going to do like felt leaves or embroider them. And I'm going to have uh, a nice big stem shooting up here with leaves on it that will be embroidered so we're just creating a scene look how easy that is easy peasy but you don't have to be a good drawer you're creating you create you create your effect with your threads um and then here, then I'm going to have some other flowers here, but I'm going to cut those out of something and I will do that afterwards. Okay, so let's work on this flower first. This is because this is my main one. We'll put the tag aside. Oh, very excited now. And what I thought I might do is I've got these lovely threads. Oh, look at that one um, from my sister. That are, oh, that one's even nice too. I don't know. Now I don't know which one. Oh, these are these are threads that my friend here, she hand dyes and she teaches courses about, I should go and do her course one day when COVID's over. Um, she does courses and this is hand dyed silk that she does. And I've just put them in there because they were in these sorts of rolls and I prefer to have them wound on. Um, I've got a bit of fabric in there as well. I mean, I never, I never have. Oh, look, I've got paper in here too. I mean, how silly is that? <laughs> Oh, there's some good stuff in here oh look at those i'm oh i know this was the little pouch this was given to me by mary i love it it's linen and someone's done all this eco dyeing i think on it and um and this was this pouch i had taken away with me last not last year the year before when i was working on my mum's oh look at that beautiful bird I need to fussy cut out that's a kingfisher oh cool so i had taken this with me when i was working on mum's book where i hand stitched all the pages in and so i'm just going to pull out a few of these just to decide which color to use and and then i thought it was a good place to keep these threads that my sister gave she gave them both to me and mum and so um i put them in there but i, I forgot that i had all those other bits in there as well isn't that funny i know i've got some little things like that in there too crazy anyway well, let's get to the job at hand now i'm thinking i might like this color it's bold or i like that should we go down the pale route route oh that can be in the center i'll put that one in the center or will i put that one in the center and that no i'll put this one on in the center i'm going to couch this around the center am i i am so what i'm going to do it's going to be tough, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to grab one of my thicker, big eye, not thicker, bigger, big, larger eyed needles. And I'm going to thread it with this. So I'll just come on screen. And so you can get these on Amazon. Apparently you can buy them in quite a big pack. I think I paid probably three or four dollars for one in Australia. How about, oh, 
No, it helps if you get it through the needle. Oh, there we go, threaded it. And so what I'm going to do is come up. So you're going to have two needles on the go for this. This is couching. We're doing couching. Anne will probably do couching, won't you, Anne? I bet you do. Um, well, I'm doing couching now. And I've got these. I've been enabled by people. I've been enabled by my sister. This is my sister enabling me. I got um, sparkly threads. I've never used sparkly threads. These are Gutterman ones. Do I want to go the spark down the sparkly road? Do I? I might not like it. Sarah would be saying to me, do it, do it. What's this one? I don't know. It looks like it's going to be tough stuff to... Well, you probably won't be able to see it that much, so I should just go for it. I might use it double because it's very thin. I think I'll use it double. That's why I'm going to tear a long one. I mean, pull out a long one. I'm going to go double. And I need to grab a needle. And this needle will do. Chenille number 24. Look at me getting all professional telling you the names. I don't know if I'm going to be able to thread it. It's very... Um, this sort of thread, it does all the... Yep, they all separate. You need to use your threader for these. So I'll just thread it. Can't see for looking. This is going to be another doozy. When you start embroidering flowers and stuff like that, it becomes a very long video. It really does. It's not a fast process. So if you ever want to buy someone's embroidered embroidered picture or something, you do understand how long it's probably taken them to make it. If it's, a, you know, you're paying a certain price. Now, I haven't, um, this is, I pulled way too much through. I don't need all of that. Okay. Although I probably actually should... I'm going to pull a bit, I should put a knot in there, I think. I should knot it. I'm going to do a knot. Just pull it through and put a knot in there. So that way I don't have to worry about, I've got way, way more than what I need, but I need to be able to end it off once I've done with my couching. Now I'm going to go this way because I'm left-handed. So that way you don't have a raw edge sticking up and annoying you. So couching, you're just going over, over the top. I quite like the sparkly, like sparkly thread. Sarah will be very proud of me. Very proud of me branching out, using things I don't normally use. Okay. Now I'm getting tangled. I'm leaving my my other needle on the end there because so you just follow your circle around and go over, and hold down. I've got way too much thread. You hold down your your piece that you're couching on. It's very easy and quite effective, I think. Oh, dear me. Okay. I'm sure there's many, you know, different ways of approaching these sorts of things. This is just the way I like I approach it. And I quite like the the thread the way it's standing out. So before I put my last stitch in, I'm going to take this and go down near where I started. See that? Look at that. And I feel like maybe I need a few more. I've done my stitches quite far apart. So I think I'll end this bit off here. And I'll just um, bring it through there, I think. I'm not going to knot it. It's very thick. I'm just going to cut it like that because we're going to put glue there. And so if you're not putting glue, knot it. Don't listen to me. But I'm just going to go around again and put another few stitches in there because I think I'd like it to be a little bit more dense. And I'll tell you what, this is lovely. 
thread to use i will say it's just very smooth i thought it'd be like cause me i thought it would cause me issues let's just say that like that like get not now i said that and now i got look at that i got knots oh my god it's causing me issues i just said it's going to cause me issues and there it did it caused me issues um no but i fixed them so that's all right i'm just going to go around again and make it a little bit thicker oh gosh now what have i done i've I've gone through in through myself. How have I done that? There we go. Yes, put a bit more. We want it to stand out a bit, the sparkles. Mm, got an itch. Sorry. <laughs> Itchy chin. You know when you get that really sharp itch? Isn't this pretty? Okay. Issues. So yeah, I kind of recommend stitch it on with the wider stitches and then just go around and fill it in if you want to put them, you know, some more stitches in there. Because the, you know, the most annoying bit is when it's still loose. Okay, I don't know what this is going to look at look like. I guess I shouldn't stress because I can just um, I can just not do this if I don't like it. I can take it out and and do another video, can't I? It's not like I'm streaming. I always worry. Look, I'm not streaming live, so I'm just not that. Oh, I am liking this thread now. What am I going to do with this? Because I'll just have to wind it on because I've got a whole lot there. And I don't want to throw it out. It wasn't very expensive. I bought a whole box with all the colours. And I do like it. Okay. So that's that one. We've done that. Put that out of the way. And I was going to use this one. But maybe I would like that one. Let's just have a look. So you can just go like this. Give yourself an idea. I quite like that. Would tone it down a bit. Love these threads. They're hand dyed and they're just they are from the Happen store. I think I'm going to go with the lilac y purpley sort of colour because I feel like it will um there's a bit more of a contrast happening there. Now I'll just grab my other needle and I'm not gonna what am I gonna do here? Oh, I've got a piece right here. Okay, so we will have a length. So I've got to thread this. Same thing, same same deal. And pull it through. You can't see what I'm doing because zo I'm zoomed in. I have zoomed in. I'm just going to put a knot like this because this is very thick. This is thick. Um, I think this is more for knitting this thread but you can still do these sorts of you can embroider with it it's just sometimes it depends on how thick your, that fabric is it might be a struggle um, and so I'm going to go ahead and couch it but now I need to decide I'm not going to do another sparkly thread I need to decide what thread um, I think I'm going to use a purpley color let me just see what I've got here Oh, this. This is what I'm going to use. That one. Where did that one come from? Hmm. This one or that one? Yeah, that one. I think I'll use that one. And then you'll see... That, and we haven't done any seed stitching yet. There's no seed stitching happening yet. It's just not happening yet, but it will. So I need to use up this one. So my, I'll tell you where my seed stitching is going. It's going in. Um, or it's going to go in there, in the centre of the flower, or it's going to go in the petals. I just have to decide. But I've got plenty of time to decide because I've got to... Um, well, now I'm thinking, actually, if I were to do that, 
those would be pretty seed stitches in there with this color. So now I'm thinking, look, and I can just stick my, look, just stick it in your mat. It's like having a pink, I'm going to use this beautiful thread actually to whip stitch this down. This is what I'm going to use. Change my mind in a flash. Isn't this just the funnest? It is so much fun. It's just fun to have a little project to do. A little random project that doesn't have any purpose. I like that. So what you can do is you can just come through. I'm going to come through to where the, the beginning of the petal is. And I'm going to pull my thread. And I'll tighten it as I go. If you know what I mean. Like I'll pull it more or less what I need. Or you could even do it like that. Stick that down there in your thing. And that way you've got that um, that pin, that needle, out of the way. So we'll just come up here. And you probably won't be able to see these stitches. Oh, you can. It's because this is a little bit... Um, so I'm coming... I don't want to do it too tight. I'm coming over my wool and just um, catching it you see and you can just see the shine of the lovely silk hand dyed thread so I'll do two petals here and then I'll pause the video and I'll come back and when with all the petals done because you don't want to sit here and watch five it done five times over I'll just show you how I'll move on to the next one after doing this one, although it doesn't take that long, but there's plenty to do on here. I just added that little piece of lace that just adds a little bit of texture as well. Okay, so we've already done one. I'm not pulling it too tight. Okay. I'm not ending this off. This is going to, let's just put this one out of the way over here and grab this one. So I've got two needles on the go. And I'm going to come back up next to, I hope, where I went down. Hopefully. That's the hope. Don't want to catch, get that all tangled. Well, that's through it. Doesn't matter. Just pull it out. Okay, and again, so I came up next to where I went down. I'm going to go down here. I might just go just in from my line. So that way, when I do the next one, I can... See, I just went in just in from my line. The next one, I'll come up just on the other side of the other line. So I know I'm not going through the same hole. And if you just hold it there a little bit, you might have to adjust it as you go. That looks like it's going to be good. So then we'll just put that one over there and grab this one. You can even come up over this one here in your previous petal and catch the two of them to unite them. That's what I would do, or that's what I am doing. And then you come up next to your petal the previous petal and then you start doing the second petal just come forward and you sort of just adjust it and and place your wool where you want it to go I'll tell you what having decent threads to stitch with is it makes it that much more pleasurable like this this silk is really um, lovely and I bought it at a craft fair I was doing a craft fair with um, this sort of group of ladies and she was one of the ladies there um, and she just has she doesn't have that many you know like a huge variety of colors I think she just you know throws them the the silks in when she's um, she does a lot of the eco dyeing on you know antique hemp I mean beautiful beautiful fabrics and she makes them into um, outfits and stuff like that you know 
shirts and tunics and things like that. So I'll put one more stitch in there and then I'll come up and do the next one. Okay, so I'll pause the video and I'll do the other two. I'm just going to do the same process again and then I will be back. Okay, I'm back. I nearly continued on without turning my video back on. So I've actually doubled this. I got a different a different length of it and I've doubled it. So it's going to be thicker. It, this is a pearl cotton. It looks like it's a number eight to me. Um, and it's hand dyed. And I have no idea where I got it from. But I'm going to do seed stitches in the petals. And I'm not going to pull them down too tight. Oh, well, I just did. I didn't want to pull them down too tight. So that they're a little bit more dimensional. Dimensional. And I always have to uh, remind myself to go in um, all different directions. So not pulling them down flat, flat. They're just, got to be careful. They're slightly raised, very slightly. Look, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to pull it not quite flat. And I'm getting two tones of colour because I've folded over my thread, which is great. Put that one up there. I mean, this could be hideous. We don't know. But I tell you what, the stitching, and if you get pull it too tight, just get your needle and just jiggle it a little bit and it will bring it back up again. Um, when you're stitching a project, I think it always goes through the ugly duckling phase. Like there's always the phase I think, oh gosh, I don't like that. Um, so I always wait. I'm very critical of my work and I always wait a little bit to get a bit more on before I decide that I don't like something. Okay, and then it is a bit far to jump over, but I'm going to jump over. So sometimes when I jump over, not that it matters because this is going to be glued down. I just sort of go through the back like that. Just got of keeps it neat. Not that it doesn't. I mean, of course it doesn't. It's not. We're not going to see the back, are we? So I don't know why I'm worrying about it. But I don't like having, you know, long expanses of thread uh, across the back. very therapeutic doing this sort of stitches it's kind of, well it's not mindless because you've got to remind yourself not to keep going in the same direction so it's not completely mindless but it is relaxing And you can do variations, like um, you can do double seed stitch. So that would be putting two next to each other. Maybe we'll do that. We might do that, I don't know, somewhere. I haven't gotten that far. I'm just thinking about this flower for the moment. I'm going to... That one's a bit tight. So you can do them loose like that or just like slightly loose and then I'm just going to put another stitch in there I think I might have to put another one down there I've got left a bit of a space down there just making sure I pull my threads that's it put one down there and then we'll jump over here. That's not too far to go. So yeah, so seed stitches kind of creates texture, but it's also a filler stitch. Oops, that I don't want it that tight because I want it slightly raised because my you know I've done the couching with the wool and the wool is quite thick so you want you don't want the stitches to sort of 
disappear because you've got a thick outline. Okay, we're nearly finished this one. jump over here so you sort of stitch around also when you're stitching like you work your way around so that you can then move on to the next peak bit without jumping too far if you know what I mean like you just sort of work your way around so I'm going up the petal and then I'm coming back down if, if that makes sense like I've got too much of a space there so I'll just go and put another little one in there you can see sometimes I have to go back and just lift it a bit because as I said I didn't want them to be completely flat And back down here I'll end this off this thread I'll finish off the other one uh, off screen because you've seen me do four petals could become quite tedious watching another one I've got to end off my thread and then I will come back so it's starting to come together like it does it does really go through the I don't like it phase and I was feeling like that already Sometimes it happens in the middle of the process. Sometimes it happens, quite often for me, it happens in the beginning of the process. I might try and, I'm going to use this thread. This will be enough. I was going to turn the video off. Well, I will do that. I'll turn the video off and then I will be back. Okay, as I was stitching, I was thinking, what do I want to do in the center here? And I was thinking, at first I was thinking I wanted to do, um, how's it going, Lily? Oh, show me. Have you finished? No, I haven't finished. Oh, great job. Great. Now, one thing I will tell you, um, the watercolour reactivates. So if you go wipe over mm -hmm. too much, you wipe off the other layers. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I, won't, I don't want to show. I want to show when, the, when you're further on, okay. on screen. Lily's doing a watercolour um, rose. Kind of, it's not like a, but it's just opening sort of rose it's for class um so um, 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 um uh, yeah so she's and she's never done watercolor before so it's um i think i'll use this color uh it's quite tough i made her what because you know i'll tell you what her art teacher She's an. I think I've told you about her before. She's naughty. She hasn't taught them anything. Like um, it's unbelievable. She hasn't taught these kids anything, and she expect and she criticizes them and tells them tells them they're not capable of doing anything. Well, she hasn't given had them do any body of work that she can even see whether they're capable of doing anything. And she hasn't looked at any of the stuff that they did last year. And she tried to blame it on on the pandemic that she can't teach them. But the other art teacher that um, retired, they did so much work when we were in lockdown last year. It's been, it was incredible how much work they did. And, um, and so it's just no excuse what she's saying. There's no excuse. I forgot to put my knot in. And, and so now she said, she said, promised them. They kept asking her, can we do something different? Because she's teaching them like their first years and, and they've already done all of that stuff and it's just not stimulating to them. And so anyway, so they asked if they could do new techniques and she just doesn't teach them anything. And, um, and then, and then she said, okay, I'm going to teach, we're going to do watercolor. And she had them go out and buy, well, Lily didn't have to, cause we had it, but, um, 
you know, watercolour paper, which is not cheap. And then, you know, watercolours, if they didn't have watercolours, they're not cheap if you buy, you know, OK quality ones. And then, um, and then they, um, and then she said, OK, we'll teach what, well, they were at school last week. There was no excuse. They did not do one, anything. They did nothing at school. So I was just like, well, she can't blame it on having to do it online. And she didn't teach them anything. And now today they're back online again. And she's told them they have to do a watercolour flower. And she put up this image that was on her back wall and they couldn't even see it. And they're like, Prof, we can't even see it. And um, and so she said, okay, choose your own image. And then, and then, um, and they're supposed to be able to watercolour a flower or whatever they choose without even being taught how to watercolour. And you, it, we all know that watercolouring is not easy and you, there's a certain technique to it. And it's not like colouring in with pencils. And so poor Lulu was, she's had, she had a hissy fit this morning. She's like, <laughs> and so I was on the phone to mum. I said, mum, talk to Lulu. You're like the, the child whisperer. And so mum spoke to her and she calmed down a bit. And then she changed her image because she wanted to watercolour a hibiscus, which was a little bit hard. And and then I said, OK, Lulu, but pr can we please, before you start, can we please look on YouTube and just watch a little tutorial, a quick one, uh, painting a similar bud. And so we did that. And so she's now got an idea in her mind how to approach it, which is fantastic. So she's she's doing it. Now, I, I had to tell you that because otherwise I'd lose my train of thought. So now what am I doing? I was sitting there while I was doing the seed stitch in my last... Um, in my last petal, I was thinking, what am I going to do in the center? And I was going to do um, knots, but we always do knots. So then I thought, well, I want to, I want my center to be fluffy. So I decided to do fluff. And I'm using, now, I don't know if you can buy this everywhere. My mum loved this stuff when she came here. This is DMC and it's cotton. It's a cotton embroidery thread as opposed to wool. I can't remember what it's called, but it is by DMC and it's cotton. Mum said she can now buy it in Australia, but she couldn't buy it many years. Like in 2003, she couldn't buy it in Australia. I'm pretty sure mum told me she can buy it. But it's quite nice to use. It's thick and fills up. And I don't know, I'm just deciding, do I want to trim that? I think I quite like it. Loopy, I've done little short ones. I think I'll leave it loopy for now. And I like this buttery sort of yellow. It's nice. Did I turn my camera back on? Because other, if I didn't, oh yes, I did. If I didn't, my my watch is telling me I need to get moving. <laughs> um, if I didn't turn my camera on, well, that would be fun. I just told you that big long spiel of a story, and I didn't have my camera on, but I do, so I can stop going on about it. Okay, so we'll put that back in there. My sister will be saying, "Gosh, what's going on?" Okay, so that's that. I might trim those. I might not. I can decide. Now, my next thing I'm going to do is, I think I need to embroider this. So, I'm going to choose a green. And I think I'm going to choose a darker green. Not that green. Not that green. I want a darker green. I don't want to use that one because that's really, well, I don't have that much of that one. That's a really nice one that my mum gave me. So, I'm going to go to my regular. DMCs. I've just got to get them. I'm, I'm loving it because I've got all of my threads near me. Well, the other choice would be a wool. Do I want a wool or a DMC? What is the choice? I'll just pull the wools out. The Appleton wools. I think I might like a wool. I really enjoy, one thing I really do enjoy is putting in all different types of threads and yeah different threads with different textures now why is that one in there that's a dmc that needs to go over there and that's a dmc how did that one get shoved in there hmm. so what color next thing is the color now i said i wanted it dark but i'm thinking i might like this one this is another one of those really that's a bit no it's the tone the tone is not right the tone is the same tone as that one if you know it, it's like a mid-tone. So I feel like I need something darker. That's a bit too dark. It's not quite the right colour. It's probably that tone's very similar to that one. Oh, now I'm not going to be able to find the right colour that I want. I don't know what colour I want. Maybe I want something a bit more 
olivey, acidy. Yeah, maybe something like that. Let's see this one. Quite like, no, I think I'll go with that one. That one's got a little bit of variegation in it too, so it probably we won't be able to notice it. But anyway, that's what I'm going to use. That's what I'm going to use. Okay. Love my mat, Pam. Thank you for showing that on your video. I can't remember which one. I think it was one of your process, or well, several of your process videos um, that you've been doing with your snippets, your hand-stitched snippets. And I'm just going to thread this needle. It'll go through this one. I just have to put, use this threader and it will be good. So I'll just show you how I'm going to do this one and then I will switch it off and do that off camera. But I like to show you how I start each thing and, and what stitch I'm going to do. And I just put a quilter's knot, I think, if I can do it with the wool. I'll just wrap it twice and, oh no, see it tangled. Note to self, the wool tangles doing that knot. I'm going to snip that off and do it. Just do my regular twirly around the, the finger knot. Yep, that'll do. Okay, so I think I, I, I'll start. I'll bring it right down here to the bottom of the garden bed. And I think I'm going to do stem stitch. So stem stitch, if you remember, you come up. You start your first one, you just come up halfway and then you come up to the beginning of your previous stitch. So I think I'll just go ahead and do that. And then as I come to the leaves, it's just a little bit thick. Now, did I draw a leaf there? No, not there. I'm going to go, oh, I can't see. I drew a leaf here. I don't think I drew a leaf there. No, I didn't. Okay, so I've got to come, I'm going to come to my first leaf. Because down there I'm going to have um, grass and, you know, I was going to say reeds. We're not in the sea. Grass and weeds, should I say. <laughs> and, and little, you know, little buddy flowers sort of things. So with my um, leaves, I'm just going to do, and I don't know if you can see that drawing there. I come, I'm going to come up to the point of the leaf. That's the kind of the scent. I put a couple of stitches on either side. Now, when you want to get the shape, you just, that's your, your longer stitch. And then the other stitches on either side are a little bit shorter. And it, in theory, gives you the leaf shape. So I'll do one uh, when off the lace so you'll be able to see it better. So you just do them a little bit shorter, top and bottom, to create the roundness of the leaf. You'll be able to see better when I move up there. Okay, that's the first one. So I'm going to come back up here halfway through my stitch. There. And do a couple more stem stitches. So it's kind of like a satin stitch doing the leaves, but it's um yeah, it's a satin stitch, but you create you've got to create your rounded shape on the side. So up the up the center there. And then I work on, I always find that works best for me. And then you got you see where your line is. You can, you can follow the line better here. So I'm not going to come up next to that because that'll make it more square. You come down a little bit. And then the same, oh, at the bottom, yeah, same at the bottom. And I've, my stitch is a little bit far apart there. So I'll just come back and put in another stitch. Which is fine. You can come back and put... A couple of stitches in if your stitches are too because I come up next to my stitches so sometimes they can be a little bit far apart and that might be all right and then I'll come and put another one over here some people like to do back stitch and outline you can do that too you can do all back stitch and outline and then um, bring your stitches over the top that's another way of doing it that's fine, that's working for me. And with, um, you know, the thicker your thread is, the, you know, like a wool is thicker than um, a few strands of DMC, and that, um, you know, it fills in quickly. So here I just need to come to my petal because it's behind my petal. So 
So you're just filling it in. Satin stitch is really just a colouring in. I call it the colouring in stitch. Okay, and then I'll come up halfway through my stitch again and do a few more back stitches to the next one. And I'll also, I'm going to stem stitch off camera the, the, um, the stem of that flower. And then I'm going to decide what to do about the leaves. So I'll finish this leaf and then I'll pause the camera. I'll probably go and prepare Lulu's lunch and then I'll come back. And I'll go to the post office and then I'll come back after that. I might put my phone to charge. Like I... I don't know how to speed up videos. Um, I don't really want to learn because when I'm watching sped up videos, I kind of find it hard to figure out what's happening. Like it's, yeah, I prefer, I prefer to watch a video that's in real time and maybe just showing the technique and then come back with the majority of it done. So that's that. I'm going to jump up here and, and do this bit. And, um, and then I'll come back. That'll be done and this will be done. And I'm starting to really like this. Okay, so I'll be back soon. Okay, Bye. guys, so I'm back. I've gone ahead and done a bit more because otherwise it'll be for, take forever. So I'll just go through what I did. Seed stitch in my sky. I probably really would have left that plain. It's a bit more me to leave it plain. But because it's all about the seed stitch, I put seed stitch there. Finished off this branch here. Um, here I just put a leaf so what I did was I had this piece of um, sari silk left over it's a greeny greeny very pale greeny color so I just cut a leaf out of that just cut a rectangle and then the triangle the the leaf shape and um, I said I was going to do that uh, stem stitch and I used six strands of DMC and then around the leaf I just did the border of the leaf I did back stitch with three strands and then I just did rows of um, running stitch in the center of the leaf to do that. Here, I'm going to do some more work here. So I, I went ahead with one uh, color, this one. I, I um, It's a variegated um, DMC thread. I used three strands, but it only had the lighter color in it. And it's quite a long way um, till I got to the darker color. So I decided just to do one row. And with you guys, I'm going to come in and use this Steph Francis Perle cotton and this one is um, number eight Perle cotton um, and then I've got a Perle I think this might be one of the silks this is a Steph Francis that's how, what I used for this flower and that one is a number five I haven't used those I just had those pulled out and then I've used this this is also number five okay so I think to start off with, I need to show you how I did this flower. Now, I could have chosen, I used a fabric in the background, and I'll show you what I did. I probably could have used a different color. It would have stood out more, but I just went with this um, hand-dyed blue sort of color, and I cut a little rectangle, and then I would cut out an oval shape, like so. And let me just see the size might have it a little bit smaller let me have a look at the side the shape of it sorry and trim a bit more let's see yeah that's going to be good and then what I did was I kind of folded it in half and I cut the center out so I cut a little it's kind of like cutting a got to be careful a semicircle more so than I move the scissors a little bit, but I'm more pulling the fabric underneath, and you get this shape here. I'm going to put that one facing in that direction. Then I took my Step Francis fab uh, fabric, not fabric. I'm going to continue to use this because we've got different colors here, so we'll get different shading. We'll probably use that much, and there'll be different colors to that part there. It's the same thread. I might move it up a little bit higher, and all I did was helps if you put a knot at the end of your thread we'll do the quilters knot does help to have a knot very helpful 
So I just go and I'm just stitching over the fabric. I'm couching on the fabric like so. I'm going to come up a little bit further forward and go down near where I was before in the centre. And you just work your way around the flower. And you can see I'm getting different colours because it's a variegated thread. And you won't believe the centre is actually <laughs> little seed stitches, but I left them loose and so they look like knots. And I used the very um, the thicker um, the thicker perlay cotton. Perlay, I think it's a perlay silk, this one that I'm using. I use the same thickness for the centre. So the variegated ones are nice because you get different colours. You see, it's the same piece, but different colours come out without having to change your threads and think about, oh, what am I going to use now? So just couching on with a very loose... I mean, it's, you could hardly even call it a satin stitch, but it's, it's loose if it is one. Rather than stopping and starting, I got a few things done. So that way um, we can just continue on and then I can show you all the bits and then I might finish it off camera and then at the end there'll be photographs. So I don't have to stop and start. I've done quite a lot of stop and starting. And there we go. So that's that one. Quite different to the other one, even though it's the same piece of thread. We'll just put a, a knot go through 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 two and then knot it and that is I don't need that one anymore so I'll wrap that around there and put that back in the box okay now to do the center of these we'll do our quilters knot again okay and I just did seed stitches but I left them loose and because it's quite a thick thread it really filled it in so just loose seed stitch little ones not too loose but a little bit loose this one I might not be able to fit so many in I've got seem to have a smaller circle. I'll get four in there. Okay, so that's those. Put that one away now we've got to work on and then i'll need a stem for those but i haven't decided on that yet this we need some of this I'll just take a nice piece i'm just going to use single strand so it's different to the other one Okay, and I'm going to start putting in random lengths of stitches and try and have them, you know, sort of sloping in all sort of different directions. Fill in the gaps. Different and, and you know, not all in a line either. Sort of some coming down here, popping up in there. Maybe some taller ones. Yeah. 
long one there. And sort of crossing over the other ones as well here and there is to um, make it look like they're all growing in different directions. You hold your, because it's too small to put in a hoop, you sort of hold it like that. That way you won't pull it with these long stitches. So just keep on going to the end. Okay. And then end that off. that one away and then we'll put this one that one goes over there okay so now I'm going to do what colors do I want maybe some pink and we might use some of this nice blue here yes okay so I think I'll use I'm going to do some knots I might double it up. I might double up the thread so I get nice big knots. Nothing too dainty. I think we're nearly there. I was going to double it up. And I'm going to put just some random French knots. I'm only going to wrap it around twice because I've doubled up my thread. Yeah, I'm just gonna un untwist it. So you only get a hint of the lace behind it that was on purpose. So it's just like a, a bit, little bit of texture. Okay, you get nice big chunky flowers with that. Okay. So I might finish it on camera actually. That's that. And now I want to do this. And I'm wondering what stitch do I want to do? 
I'm going to do single stranded. See if I can get in. Yes, it's already got a knot on the end. Okay, so what if I were to do little um, bullion stitches, just little ones? So I'll wrap it around five, five or six, six, maybe five or six times two, three. Four, five. I'm going to put two together. next to each other I think one two three four five so I'm assuming everyone's learned how to do those because we did those um, but I probably should tell you again Oh, I've got a tangle here, just a sec. Put my needle in there. Give it a tug and get rid of my knot. There we go. I think they're really cute. So I'll have some more down here. Careful not to pull. So you come up. I've got a hair there. Come up and then you go forward and then you come back to where you came up to start off with. So I do. It's just too much of a towel happening there so one two three four five and then you wrap it around your needle don't hold it too tight pull your needle through and then you just sort of put it down and it just as you tug it sort of sorts out the the bullion knots So I'm going to put another one next to that. So they look like they're little sort of buddy sort of things. Two, three, four, five. So I'll do a couple more and then I might finish it and then there'll be photographs at the end. I've got to, um, I've actually got two. Um, so you can see them there. I've got to do the stems on those and I'll probably do, well, I probably should show you that. I'm probably going to do daisy, a single daisy stitch on those, but this is going to take me a minute to do the, the grubs. Three, four, five. We'll do a few more of these, see how we go. I'm putting two together so they stand out a bit more. And they actually don't have to go right across. I can do other things. One, two, three, four, five. Another one down here. It's a good thing to keep practicing the, the things that you've learned if you're just new to this sort of thing um, in Anne's challenge then you know it's good to keep on practicing because otherwise you forget three four five might have done six so 
I think I'll do another one of those. So, I mean, it's the, the prompt is seed stitch, but there's a whole lot of other stuff happening here. I think I could just continue on right now. One, two, three, four, five, six I've done. Untangled. I have a tangle. Where's my tangle? It's in the back here somewhere. I'm sure my tangle is right here. Maybe I couldn't just continue on. That's that bit there. Okay. Oh, now what have I done? Ah, let's see if it works itself out. Should do. Just tidy up my wraps. I don't know what I've done. So I'll just have a messy one there. Oh, it's all right. That'll do. It's a bit wonky. Okay, so I'll just put another one next to it. Two, three, four, five. That'll do. Maybe get tangled again. Oh, oh, it's a struggle. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Do I want any more? I could have one down there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I know there's six there, but I might, oh, I could probably do with one over here now. I'll put one over here. I think I've got enough thread. Just one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I'll just make it, I think. Because then I've got an uneven number, which I prefer. Very short piece of thread here. One, one two, three. Four, five. So I'll show you what I've done. So this is more embroidery, in my opinion, than slow stitching because we're not, we really are doing embroidery here. So there's the little grubby bits there. I've still got to do this bit here. So let's choose a green. I'll go to that green that I liked before. I think it's a different, no, not this one. It's here. This green. Yeah, I'll use some of this. I'm going to 
these four strands. I think I bought this at a shop. I think it's called Yarn and Fibre in the UK. And they've now said that they're not shipping to Italy anymore. And I really love their threads. This is like a silk. Not that I need any right now, but, you know, I might one day. Just do my knot. So you're not going to be able to see very much here, but so I'm just going to put a stitch going down into here. Whoops. Blue across. Oh, look, I'm hanging on to my knot, aren't I? I didn't. Well, this was already loose, this one here. And I'm going to put, I'm just going to do a daisy stitch here. Tails come through. I'm just going to put daisy stitch. So daisy, one daisy stitch is like one chain stitch. So you come back near where you came up. You hold your thread over to the side. Whoops. Helps if you stay threaded. And you do a loop. Don't pull it too tight. And you hold it like that. And then, just bear with me one second. Okay, so you've, you've caught the loop and then you put a stitch down to hold it like that. So it can only fit one in there, but I will put one up here as well. So hold it over your thread over to the side. So creating a loop, put your thumb in there so you don't pull it down. And then pull your thread, and remove your thumb and you've caught your loop. There's your daisy stitch. I'm sure Anne will make this. This will be one of her videos at some point. And I'm just going to put a couple in there to fill in that space. And then I'm going to go and put one in over here. I'm just jumping across. Nobody's going to see the back. And if you wanted to fill that in, you could then go and put a little stitch in the middle if you want to and fill it in, but I'm not going to. I think I'll put another one there. How many is that? Four, five. We need five. I hold my thread. I'm sure most of you know how to do this stitch. You can do them around in a circle and then you can create a daisy. Yeah, that's better. So I'll just knot that off. And I have one more thing to do, but I'll do it off camera and you'll see what I did. I mean, you know how to do it, but it's going to be knots. It's just going to be knots. So I'm going to do some more knots in here. I feel like they need need some yellow. Need something, some yellow knots or something. Do some yellow in there, I think. And then I'll be done. So I'll put photographs at the end. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's my interpretation. They're fluffy. They're like loose seed stitches, loose-ish seed stitches there and seed stitches in the background. Okay, so I'll, I'll put the photograph at the end and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.